Okay, students, uh, we have launched the IBPS SO marketing course for this year. We are providing the classes for pre and the mains exams, and we are covering each and every topic, all the subjects. So, there are video classes that you can watch anytime, and then there are live sessions. We are providing the study material that you can download on your dashboard, right? You can download the PDFs. There are mock test series. We are providing 10 full length tests for both pre and the mains exams. Then there are unit tests and we are providing special attention to the professional knowledge section. So students, we are not just providing the courses for the marketing. There are course for the courses for the HR and the law officer, right? Systematic study plan is provided and we provide the interview preparation guidance, right? Once the exams are over, we are going to provide you interview preparation course, right? So list of our students who cracked the exams using the bank exams today's courses in previous years in 2021, there were just 60 vacancies and out of those 60, six students were from our batch. And then in 2020, 119 students finally uh, got selected. All these students that took our courses and they cracked their respective exams, right? And in 2019, all these students, so we have uh, an experience of like six years to for teaching for IBPS SO marketing in 2021, 2020, 2019. So this year we got 535 vacancies for only marketing, SO marketing. So it's a, a golden opportunity, I would say, right? So if there is any doubt in your mind, you can drop us a WhatsApp message 9067201000. This is our WhatsApp number. Now let's get back to the session. Thank you. So the direction says each of the question given below consists of a statement or a question and two statements numbered one and two are given below. So like this is this is a kind of general statement, but uh, you can um, you may see two or three or maybe four statements clubbed with a question. So what is it there? Like uh, like in this question. You'll be uh, given a statement, and following the statement, there will be a question that there are two mixture like this. There are two mixture M and N, and what will be the total quantity of mixture N in the beginning? So total quantity of mixture N in the beginning, right? So the mixture is containing spirit and water, and you have to tell the total quantity of the mixture N. So this is the question. To answer this question, there will be some statements given, like statement first and statement two. So you need to find out whether the information given in statement one alone is sufficient. Or state or information or data given in statement two alone is sufficient to answer that question asked, right? Or you 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 require both the statements or neither of the statement can answer this answer, answer this question. So these are uh, some types of situations here. So this is a general a general kind of uh, you know directions directions for the questions clubbed with two statements. There, there's a general kind of selection. You may uh, you may see three or four statements clubbed with the question as well. For that case, uh, obviously the options will be something, some different, but you may get the idea that what kind of uh, options will you see when you see a statement cl club with two statements here. For an instance, like uh, give answer A if the statement one is alone to sufficient to answer the question and answer B if statement two is alone is sufficient to answer the question and answer C if the data either in statement one or in statement two, either one uh, using either one of the statements is sufficient to answer. Answer D if both statements are required. Answer E if statement if the data in statement one and two together are necessary. So this is a general kind of instruction for a question club with two statements. And you might see some different options uh, when uh, when you see uh, three or four statements with a single question. Okay. So uh, to see uh, by while seeing this by seeing this you can get a rough idea of what kind of options do you see in a, in these kinds of questions. Okay, so let's try to find out uh, how to tackle these questions and how to approach this question. First and foremost information that is required, the, uh, or you can say the tip that is required is, never try to find out the exact value, exact numerical value of any answer. For example, if you're saying what will, in the question first, what will be the total mixed quantity of mixture, and you need not find the exact value of quantity of mixture and like, 10 liters, 12 liters, 15 liters, whatever it is. You just need to find out can the information, can the data which is given in the statements is sufficient? Uh, can uh, that data be used to find out the answer? 
right? You just need to find out. You don't need to solve the whole question. You just need to have a idea that can the yes, can the statement, uh, single statement or uh, combining two statements can be you know done to find out the answer. So let's start with the session here. Uh, let's start uh, with question number first. It says there are two mixtures of spirit and water. So there are two mixtures of spirit and water. And those two mixtures are named M and N. Those two mix mixtures are named M and N. Okay. And these mixtures contain spirit and water. They have two uh, two constituents, spirit and water. So let's just say mixture one is containing S1 and W1. And similarly, S2 and W2 are two constituents of N, right? So now it also says the quantities of spirit in both the mixtures is 460 units. So I can say S1 plus S2 is equal to 460. Okay. Now the ratio of spirit and water, the statement first says the ratio of spirit and water in the mixture N is 3 ratio 5. So in the mixture N, the spirit, the ratio of the spirit and water is 3 ratio 5. So I can say it is like this. And let's just say it is 3x and 5x. Okay. Now the quantity of water in the mixture M is 340 units. So the value of W1 will be equal to 340. Right. So can we uh, can we see that uh, only the statement first can um, is sufficient to answer the question? Because you can see, you can see S1 plus 3x is equal to 360. That's it. This is the question. This is the information here. And also, can we use this information any, uh, you know, anyway? I don't think so. Because what will be the total quantity of mixture? And this is the question. So uh, I need to find out what will be the value of 8x. So anyhow, if I can, if I can find out, if I can find out the value of x here so i can say that but the value of w1 is given right and we have an equation here so until and unless i find out uh, i find out the value of s1 i can't say what will be the value of x right so statement one alone is of no use here now statement second if the if one seventh of mixture n is mixed with mixture n so one seventh of mixture M, that is one by seven of S1 plus 340, it is added to mixture, oh no, uh, one by seventh of mixture N, that is 8X, right? Plus mixture M, that is S1 plus 340, S1 plus 340, right? It is equal to, 630 it is equal to 630 so can i uh, can i find out the value of x here well that is obvious here because you can see uh, s1 and x are two variables here in equation one and here also you can see s1 plus this x these are two variables here so for two variables there are two equations and we can easily find out the value of x and s1 as well so if we if we can find out the value well, what is the value of x so we can easily find out what is the value of 3x and 5x as well so hence i can find out what will be the total quantity of mixture n in this case and i want these two equations to find out that answer and these two equations the first equation was given by the statement first and the second equation is uh, is given by the uh, by the statement second so i can say that both these statements are required like both the statements are required to answer the question both the statements are required to answer the question so i uh, i will say statement one both the statements one and both the statement uh, and statement two are required to answer the question okay let's move to the next question so three persons x y and z each cover a certain distance of d kilometers y takes five hours less than x to cover the given distance and find the speed of y okay so we have question here so, uh, that y takes five hours less than x five hours less than x to uh, to do uh, to do this and uh, to cover the distance and we have to find out the speed of y for that 
the statements are given like by running with a speed of 50 meters per second covers the given distance in 2.5 hours so i can easily find out what is the value of distance here and that will be equal to distance is equals to uh, speed into time so we can find out the value of distance here now to find out the speed of y i can say that uh, the distance is required and divided by time taken by y to cover that distance is also required so we have found out the value of we have found out the value of distance and it is also clear that statement first first statement is not sufficient to answer the question because it only tells us about the distance only right now the, let's see the this uh, what is the statement second says it says if the speed of y had been 20 25% less so what about the speed of y let's just say that speed of original speed was sy1 and now the changed speed is sy2 so it uh, if the speed of y had been 20% 25% less so that means the ratio will be 4 ratio 3 right ya fir usko hum aise bol sakte hai ki pehle agar 4x thi to ab 3x ho jayegi right and speed of x speed of x and similarly speed of x if uh, speed of x had been 25% more then i can say uh, sx1 was the original speed of x and sx2 is a changed one so 25% more that means 4 ratio 5 this will be the ratio and i can say if the uh, original speed was 4 by then now the change speed will be 5 by ठीक है गेन इंटरप्रेट कर लिया उसके बाद क्या बोला है देन बोथ ऑफ देम वुड हैव टेकन इक्वल टाइम टू कवर द डिस्टेंस नाउ वी ऑलरेडी नो दैट बोथ एक्स एंड वाई आर कवरिंग द इक्वल डिस्टेंस सो डिस्टेंस इज सेम फॉर देम राइट एंड ही इज आल्सो सेइंग नाउ इफ द डिस्टेंस इज सेम देन स्पीड इज डायरेक्टली प्रोपोर्शनल टू टाइम एंड नाउ ही इज सेइंग दैट टाइम इज टाइम टेकन बाय देम इज आल्सो इक्वल हाउ इज इट पॉसिबल देन can anyone tell me if distance is constant if distance uh, covered by both entities is same and time taken is also same then obviously their speed the speed will also be equal speed will also be equal and that means that the second one of that the second their changed speeds are equal right because if it had been if the speed of y had been 25% less that means 3x and if the speed of x had been 25% more that means 5y if if this would have been the speeds then on then in that condition both of them would have taken the equal time so this means this the change speeds is also equal so 3x is equals to 5y and it means x ratio y we can find out x ratio y is equal to 5 over 3 okay so is it of any help here is it of any any help here like x over y okay so the, we have the ratio and it has also been said that y takes 5 hours less than x so it is talk, talking about the original time taken by y and original times taken by x so we have a relation here so i can say t y 1 is equals to t x 1 minus 5 right this is the equation so t y 1 minus tx1 should be equal to 5 right and that will be equal to distance traveled divided by speed and distance traveled divided by speed right so distance traveled by speed first speed is 4x uh, first speed of y is 4x original speed of uh, y is 4x and original speed of x is 4y is equals to 5 and we can find out and and also we have the uh, the relation between x and y here in this uh, in this equation as well and we have in this equation as well we have two variables we already know the value of d here right if we take the information of uh, first statement if we use the information of first statement that is distance if we use d here if we use d here so we can and there will be only uh, two variables x and y here and for that two equations will also be there so we can easily find out what will be the value of x and y here and once we find out the value of x and y we can find out the original values of speed of y and speed of x as well and so i can say that clubbing first and second we can find out what is the answer to the question asked clear but is it it
बस इतना ही होगा नो डोंट स्टॉप हेयर ऑलवेज गो फॉर द रेस्ट ऑफ द ऑप्शन एज वेल देखो बाकी और भी कुछ क्या कॉम्बिनेशन पॉसिबल हैं या नहीं है ठीक है डोंट डू लाइक दिस के फर्स्ट और सेकेंड के क्लब क्लबिंग से बन गए हैं आंसर आ रहा है तो वहीं पर रुक जाओ डोंट स्टॉप डोंट स्टॉप देयर uh you know explore for some other options as well so that you can see what are the total possible options theek hai chaliye ab chalte hain hamare third pe ki third statement kya bolta hai third statement ye bol raha hai ki if the speed of x had been 25% less so let's just say original mm -hmm. sx1 tha aur changed speed kitni hai x x2 so it if it had been 25% less that means the ratio will be 4 ratio 3 right or i can say 4 Z और 3Z ये वैल्यूज होंगे राइट सो देन इट वुड हैव टेकन नाइन आवर्स मोर सो नाउ द डिस्टेंस बीइंग कवर्ड बाय X इन बोथ द कंडीशन इज सेम राइट हेयर इन दिस ऑप्शन डिस्टेंस कवर्ड बाय X इन बोथ द कंडीशन इज सेम राइट एंड सो स्पीड विल बी इनवर्सली प्रपोर्शनल टू टाइम सो आई कैन से टी एक्स वन एंड टी एक्स टू द रेशो विल बी इक्वल टू थ्री रेशो फोर नाउ द डिफरेंस हेयर इज वन यूनिट एंड द वैल्यू ऑफ वन यूनिट इज गिवन हेयर नाइन सो आई कैन इजली फाइंड आउट वट विल बी द वैल्यू ऑफ टाइम हेयर सो टाइम विल बी टाइम विल बी टी एक्स वन लाइक ट्वेंटी सेवन हेयर टी एक्स टू थर्टी सिक्स हेयर राइट वी कैन इजली फाइंड आउट द वैल्यू ऑफ टी एक्स वन एंड टी एक्स टू एंड वंस वी हैव फाइंड आउट द वैल्यू ऑफ टी एक्स वन I can easily find out the value of. I can easily find out the value of here. Yeah, T y one as well, right? T y one as well, because T y one is equal to two x one minus y. This is the uh, this is the uh, information given in the statement itself, right? So now I can find out the value of T y one as uh, as well, and I have find out the value of. distance as well in the first statement so now clubbing the first and third statement as well if i club the first statement that is distance i have find out and third statement is giving uh, the information about time taken by y so if i club the first and third statements then also i can find out the answer to this question so i can say clubbing either first or second or either first and second or first and third i can easily find out the value clear so i hope you have uh, you have understood this question so this is the way we should approach the question set of data sufficiency now let's move to the next question find the cost price of item z what is the cost price of item z Now, item Z is marked up by sixty percent. So, marked up by sixty percent means the ratio of marked price to cost price will be equal to eight ratio five, right? It will be equal to eight ratio five. And also, the first statement says now the, using only first, I cannot say I cannot find out the value of C because only ratio is given. Original values might be some might be anything. Right, we we just know the ratio as as uh, as given at, at this moment. So right, I cannot find out the value of C P M using the statement one alone. Now statement second says selling price of the item Z is more than twenty seven hundred. Now it is more than twenty seven hundred. It may it might have any value like twenty seven hundred, twenty seven hundred, two seven five zero, twenty eight hundred, twenty nine hundred, or maybe one lakh, two lakh. It may have any value. it isn't certain so it isn't giving giving me any certain information any certain information is not being provided by the second information so i cannot use this statement now the th third statement profit earned on selling item z profit earned on selling item z is x percent and where x is any integer which is which is greater than or equal to 20 it is greater than or equal to 20 so there are many 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 and many figures many numbers which are greater than and equal to 20 if you don't know about the uh, profit percentage so i here also no certain information is given so i cannot use this statement either right now for the fourth statement says item z is sold at 33.5% discount so from here i can only find out the ratio between ratio between mp and sp 
right? And using these two statements, first and four, I can find out the value or their combined ratio of MPCP and SP. But, but I cannot find out any numerical value because for finding the numerical value of CP here, I need to have at least one numerical value either for discount, right? Or for profit or for MP or for SP, any one numerical values required to find out the cost price of item C. I have only the combined ratios. I don't have any numerical value. So I cannot find out the cost price of item Z. So neither of the statements, none of the statements is sufficient to answer the question. None of the statements is sufficient. This is the answer here. If the question were like that, uh, find out the cost price of item set, if the discount is like this, if the discount is like this or, top, or the value of profit is given, then I could have said the clubbing first and fourth statement, I can find out the uh, find out the combined ratio of MPCP and SP and here and hence I can find out the value, what will be the value of discount in the terms of ratio and I can, uh, I can uh, equate it to the numerical value of D and I can easily find out what will be the value of CP here. But nothing like this is given right if this were the case then combining first and fourth we could have find the find out the answer but now here in this situation i cannot find out any numerical value for the cost price of item set clear okay so now let's move to the next question find the total amount invested by mr a so i can say he is asking the principal principal so <clears throat> principal we have to find out and a statement first says a and b invested their amount at simple interest and compound interest respectively and the difference between the interest received by both after three years is 1500 so time here is given three years and also um, let, let's just say the interest uh, obtained by b right and interest obtained by a is 1500 okay so let's just see that it is ib minus ia is equal to 1500 okay so but can this statement be used to answer the question because we don't know the rate percentage right we don't know the rate percentage here we don't know what was the uh, what was the principle for A and what was the principle for B. So how, how can I use this information? So this is of no use here. Similarly, statement second, the total amount received by Mr. B after two years is 4,000 at compound interest. So time here is given and then also interest is also given. Uh, so amount is also given, but what can I do if I don't know the amount, the principal value for B, right? So both the statements are of no use here. I cannot use any statement to find the answer. So none of the statements can be can be used for answering the question. Okay. Now let's move to the next question. And it is the last question of the session. Number of females in 2011 is what percentage of number of males in 2010? Okay. If the ratio of number of males to females in 2010 is 3 ratio 2. So I can say in 2010, the male to female ratio is 3 ratio 2 is 3 ratio 2 right and the difference is difference between them is 500 so i can say the difference here is 1 and the value of 1 will be equal to 500 so i can easily find out what will be the value. total number of male that will be equal to 1500 and female will be equal to 1000 right like this and statement second says, but let's see, let's just see here that statement one low is not sufficient because here in this question, in the statement, information is given only about 2010 only. And I have to find out the uh, ratio of females in 2011 and males in 2010, right? So nothing, no information is given about 2011. So statement one is not sufficient. So now let's just see about statement second. In 2011, the male to female ratio will be equal to 6 ratio 5, right? And there is 20% growth in the number of males in 2011 as compared to 2010. So in 2010, number of males were 1,500, 10% growth, 20% growth. We can 
easily find out the what will be, what will be the value of number of males in 2011 right and once we can find out once we have found out the value of male in 2011 i can easily find out what will be the value of females here in 2011 right and hence i can find out the required ratio as well so it is evident here that state both the statements 1 and 2 are necessary to answer the question clear i need not find the exact value i can just say that in this information using the information of both the statements i can find out the answer so this is sufficient right so like this we can solve the questions of data sufficiency here i i hope i you have understood the concept and approach here and if you have any questions any query you can raise it and it will be resolved right and uh, you can purchase for more uh, for more detail you know explanation of uh, of the questions like this and for practicing more and more uh, questions like this and again you know getting uh, getting the questions and uh, practice sets like this and uh, to learn everything in detail and comprehensive manner you can purchase a batch you can subscribe to the batch and uh, it will be a lot more beneficial for you to clear the examination